All right, welcome back to Cymax. Today I'm going to talk about Cymax Notebook. This is a, sort of a continuation of the writing series, and in the context that I need to organize what I'm writing in, in various ways. And so I've thought about Emacs and org mode as an electronic notebook and have written in uh, the Cymax Notebook library lots of ways to help me create, open these notebooks, find files, search files, get specific agendas, and store links to them, etc. So I'm going to tell you about that today. So a notebook in my mind is, is really just a collection of org files that has some context. And in that sense, you'll see that Cymax Notebook is, is really built on top of, of Projectile, which is a, a project management library in Emacs, and extends it in a couple of ways. So the idea behind projectile is a project is in a directory and everything below it. And um, you mark it as a Git repo or you put dot projectile in there. And that's what makes a, uh, a project. Now, uh, let's see. Um, what, what I've been working on here is, is making my own interface to that. And uh, so I want to show you a couple of those things that, that I did. And then I'll walk through the code of how I implemented it at the end. So it's um, somewhat typical. My bottom screen here is off a little bit. Uh, so that'll be good enough. That's better. Uh, there's so many th aspects to this notebook that, um, as, as usual, I built a Hydra menu around it. And in Cymax, I have a, a nested set of Hydras that I trigger by um, pressing caps lock. And then the notebook for me is an application. So I press A and then N. And this is the, the menu that you can see at the bottom for all the things I can navigate by making a new notebook, opening a notebook, find files or directories in the notebook. Um, open the Dured directory editor, or look for notebook contacts. We can also search in different contexts, and there's a couple of utilities over here I'll talk about, and then we'll get to links uh, as we go. So what kinds of things constitute a notebook? Again, it's any kind of project. So if you're a student, it would be a notebook per class or a notebook per research project. Um, in my work, I have notebooks for committees. I have notebooks for each student I write letters for, I have notebooks for my research, um, and then other notebooks for every uh, every code development project like Cymax and Orgref. Those are all um, like projects that I can use this notebook interface for. So um, I would just press N to make a new one, and this will show me um, like all of the ones that, uh, that I have um, here. And I'm not going to make a new one for this. Um, we'll just use the one that I have uh, open. So if I press O, then I get a list of all the notebooks. You know, here are some for my students, and these are all notebooks that are tagged as a as a project by by projectile. Okay, so uh, that's the easy way to to make a new or open a notebook. Um, let me show you how uh, searching looks. So here, if I do um, SA will search all the files in um, in the notebook. That's the easiest one. And SS will, will ask me for a pattern to recognize some files. So if I only want to search in .org files or only in .l files, SB searches open notebook buffers and ST searches by title and date. So let's try that one. ST gives me uh, an IV. Um, an IV selection completion tool that I can use to um, to look in all of these different uh, files that that have different titles um, in the org file, or um, I can look for uh, the date that's listed uh, in here. So if I was to pick on this one, um, it would take me to this, and you can see this is uh, an org file with that specific title. All right, and then if I want the agenda, so in org mode, there's this idea of an agenda, and normally you have a list of agenda files that you uh, maintain. But I usually, if I want to find out what is the agenda for a project, I don't want to see my other agenda files. 
And so what we have here is a n, um, and I type a, and then I can see a list of to-do items. And these are all the to-do items that I have in this, uh, in this notebook project. So I can click on, uh, say, this one, and it will show me the org db entry that I have, um, which is a future video that I'll, plan I'll make later, maybe later this week. So that's a pretty handy way of limiting the scope of what you can get in the agenda. And then if you, were, if you use tags, then it's, it's nice if you can use consistent tags. And it's not likely I remember what all the tags in a project are. Uh, sometimes I might not see a project for a week or two. And so going back to here, I can just use the, the T, uh, T option. Let's try that again, A and T. And this will show me all the tags that I use in, the, uh, in this particular project. And then I can make sure I use the right ones and it automatically tags the current, uh, the current heading. Okay, so um, the other thing that I wanted to show you is, is this idea of a, a project link, a notebook link. This is a different kind of link than, than you would normally do. Um, what, you, what you see here is a project name and a file, and then here a, a third component that says uh, go to character position 8834. So the, the reason I made this new kind of link is I was running into a problem where I had files on say Dropbox or Box and then my students would have files somewhere else in Box and so there was no way we could ever put find either relative link or a relative path or absolute path that would allow us to open the same file in the same project and the solution to that was to rely on projectile which keeps a list of project names and where they're located on my machine and on another machine, the same project name has a different path. And so this allows me then to have links to projects and then the projects can move, you can, um, you can reorganize them, uh, et cetera. And what happens is this gets parsed to find the path and you can see the tooltip of where this is and then it opens this file and then it opens it to this char. So clicking on this takes it directly to this position. And I have a nice way of, of um, making links in those that I'll, I'll get to. All right, and the last thing is in, in a project, you often have participants. So let's, let's add a participant. I'm gonna add myself. And a participant has an email. And we'll, uh, we'll use my, my work email here. All right, and this, this is now a regular heading in org mode with, uh, with this single property here, but now I can use nv-contacts and it will give me a list of, of participants. And that, that is going to be useful in uh, a little bit. Let's, let's add a couple more. Let's make this called participants. And let's add person one. Okay, so now we have two people in, in this project. And if we look at NB contacts again, you can see person one and person two, like that, and then you can just jump right to it. The reason why that uh, becomes helpful is that I can have, um, let's say I have some task to be done here. Uh, well, let's do this, we'll just say NB-assign and then it'll ask me who to assign it to and it will prompt me to put in a date and then we get a nice deadline and the properties that it's assigned to this email address and that's an easy way for me to keep track of of who is supposed to be doing something all right this um, this probably shouldn't be here this is what i typed in uh, for for the video so let's go back to um, up here and see what kind of things we can, uh, we can look at in terms of how the code is written. So there's in the Cymax uh, here, this is uh, one of the few libraries I've written in a totally literate programming style. And what that means is that it's all written in org mode. 
And it's loaded with this line here that um, is an org babel command that loads the file. And what that does is tangle out all of the codes. So here you see this says tangle no. So this line won't get tangled out. But this line, uh, this cell block says tangle yes, and it will get tangled out. And it, it, it creates the um, notebook.l file. So this ends up looking just like a regular Emacs Lisp file, but it's not how, um, how it's distributed in Cymax. Okay, so again, this is just built on projectile and projectile lets you switch to a known project. So you can use all the projectile bindings and find a file in the project, um, find a file in any project, switch to a project buffer, um, or run one grep on them. These are some common ones. And those also are more or less um, in, implemented in here with some of these search commands, but you'll see the, that I implement these uh, separately. And then these are the commands I use the most. So n maps on to nb new, nb open, nb agenda, and then um, nb archive, which is shown uh, down here. All right, so the way literate programming works is you, you write a regular org mode file with source blocks in it, and then anything you want to be tangled out to the main file, you, um, the way I did it here was say tangle yes. Let's see, that's because I have up here a property for the whole file that nothing is tangled unless I say uh, to tangle it. And that allows me to have examples or test ideas here, and as long as I don't make it tangle, then um, it doesn't get included. All right, so here's um, just some regular setup. <clears throat> um, I require a couple of packages um, that are that get used. Uh, AG is, is a searcher. I have a section here for defining variables that uh, are used in here. So this is the directory where, uh, the default directory where projects might get stored. And every project, when you initialize it, gets a main file that for me is called readme. And then you can define a project as, um, as a git project or projectile, but I actually put both, um, both of those in now. So every notebook is a git repo on its own. So you can put everything in version control if you want. And it is also um, registered with projectile. And then I like when I switch to a project to go ahead and open the main file. So usually um, what will happen when I switch project is we just run this little Lambda function uh, to switch to a project with NB open and open the, the main file. All right, so to make a new notebook, there's um, this is an interactive function that tries to create a project with the name. Uh, it reads the interactive uh, name here and then here we make the directory if we need to and then depending on what kind of file we have we run some shell commands to initialize git and I just touch projectile uh, so that we have it registered and then we add the um, project to the known projects and save them and then find the uh, open the main file and that that's all it is. Um, opening an existing project is uh, very short. It's a very thin wrapper around projectile switch project. And I just changed the default action of what happens when you switch so that it does what I want. I don't do this one very often, but I, I made it possible to just get clone a notebook uh, or get clone a URL um, into a path and then it's registered as a notebook. And similarly, you can uh, clone a, an existing copy. So if you wanna make a copy of a notebook to work on it for some reason, um, you can just do it by, by cloning. All right, now the agenda is something that is a, a pretty great feature of org mode. You can use the agenda to search for things, to search for tags, search for properties, search for to-dos, figure out what list of things need to be done. And the, the key thing in here is that we have to get a list of agenda files. And so I get that in this NB org files function. This just maps over all of the um, files in the project. And there's, there's probably even smarter ways to get this now, but basically I just get every file that ends with org and it gets returned as um, 
as a list. So let's see, we have, we're map, map car, we apply this function over this list. And so this list is filtering out from all of the project files, everything that ends in org. It doesn't have a hashtag in it. Once we get that list, we join it with the project root so that we have absolute paths to each one. And then all we do is use um, a let bind to temporarily say what org agenda files is and then call it org agenda. That's all. All right. That allows us to do things like um, like this, NB search agenda, uh, true with jkitchen. This would find tasks marked uh, to do that are that are tagged with jkitchen. Um, well, let's see, this is in Cymax, so this may not be fast. I'm not gonna do it. Let's go back to, Cymax has a lot of stuff in it. Let's go to this one. Let's go back to this one. So now I forgot what that was already. So NB search agenda marked to do. Let's look again at this one. So here we have an optional to do only and match. All right. So we could have, say, let's find things tagged journal, maybe. And we don't need them to be to do. Here we have an entry that is tagged with journal. Um, easy enough. You can also run this in um, interactively. Let's see how it looks. NB search agenda. No, well, I guess not. Looks like I have some residual thing that I have been working on that isn't uh, isn't working too too well. All right, um, that's there. Um, I made a way to create an archive. So sometimes if you need to upload something to say Zenodo or Figshare, or you need to share something with a collaborator. Um, it's easy to just zip up the whole notebook directory and send it to them. Here we do it. Um, if you have a Git repo, you can use uh, Git. Otherwise, we use, uh, by default, uh, make a zip file. And you could also use uh, tar or, or bzip too if you want it in here, and then just change these, uh, these arguments. And then we just uh, read in the zip file name and run run the shell command uh, that gets constructed here. All right, getting the tags is uh, pretty straightforward. We, I use orgql in here, so if you have a, a huge number of org files, it may not be super fast. Um, it's gotten a lot faster uh, in, the, in the last year, so uh, your, your mileage may vary. Let's see if how fast it works here. Uh, can't open a file. All right. I think it must be using some uh, some kind of cache of a file that's not not around anymore. Um, I don't know off the top of my head the quick way to, to change that. Um, here, the idea though is that you are able to get a list of tags that are used so that you can make sure you use the same ones. So if you if you have unusual tags or you don't want to um, use the plural version one time and the singular version another time, that we just use uh, NB set tags to get this list and then we can use completing read uh, to finish them. Uh, all right, let's see, menu, I guess. You can't see the menu in this view. Uh, my Emacs menu is way up at the top. Let's see what happens if I, oh, there you can see it. So here we have a menu that you can use and here's a long list of, of projects um, that I have used in the past. And I don't use the menu very often, but it's nice to be a little bit discoverable. 
All right, let's look at searching the whole notebook. There are a ton of search options and I, I go around and around on which ones I use the most and which ones um, are, are the fastest and most flexible. Uh, RIFGREP is one of the fastest and I have that uh, bound to HyperP SR and it's, I like it better than GREP. Um, projectile AG is also nice and also fast and projectile GREP is probably my least favorite of, of all of them. And then there's council get grep that only searches files in a git repo. Uh, so that's a that's kind of nice. There are some ways that you can um, search for text in the current directory. And so council ag, council grep, council pt only looks in the current directory. ag is recursive and uh, but grep is not. So it only finds in the it does not recurse into directories. And then there's a whole bunch of ways to find files or directories. Uh, so you may be interested in finding a file or a directory or finding a file in a directory or finding file in known projects. Now this is going to search in all your projects and so it might not be fast if you have a lot of projects. Um, so I don't normally do this. I usually have a pretty good idea of what project I want to look in. And you might notice I'm just making notes to myself here on what all of the options are. And we can do um, projectile multi-occur. That will look in all of the project buffers. That's how, let's see if that looks. Um, let's say if I do search, what happens? We found 673 matches for search. So these are all buffers uh, that evidently are open and, and connected to uh, this Cymax project. All right, and then finally, limiting the scope. Um, we can limit the scope to some kinds of files. So the NV search function takes a pattern star.org and then searches for a string uh, like, like xref. And we could similarly limit it to uh, star.l files. So I don't know, let's try that one here. And this is running in Cymax, so there's, there's a lot of files. It's, it's not super fast. then we get a nice uh, way to look for all the places that the word xref appears. All right, so I use ivxref for that. It's just a way of making locations and being able to jump to them. Um, and it has a nice uh, nice feature for finding matches in the directory. And it was easy, easy to write uh, like that. For nv search all, this is just taking a regular expression and looking at all of the files in the in the project. Um, I don't really love that one, but um, it does use grep and it's it's reasonable. All right, and then um, let's see, jump to places in an org file. So this was a suggestion um, in one of the issues that it'd be nice to have something like a table of contents. So what this does is loop through the org files and it extracts some information, mostly the title, the author, and the file name, and then gives you a bunch of candidates to um, look at. So we look for the title, the date, and the author, and then we create some candidates down here where we uh, use this format string. And then finally we have completing read, and so that one again looked like, let's see, that is search by title. ST, and we still have some uh, some cache problem there, I think. And then there are other ways to jump to a headline, uh, but it's not really part of this project. Um, let's see, IV org jump to project headline is a, another function that I wrote somewhere else in Cymax that lets me jump to any headline that is inside um, of your project directory. All right, and then um, there is an NB help function. It just opens this file. And then we'll get to some uh, management tools. All right, so when I have a project, sometimes it's just me um, and I don't worry about uh, like being able to assign a task. But sometimes I work with other people and uh, 
I need to keep track of who I, who have I assigned a task to and um, when do I expect it to be done. And this is mostly for my own management. They don't necessarily have access to my org files to see that, uh, but there's some ways I can um, use something like Cymax email to communicate that to them. But the idea in this uh, NB assigned task was that we could get a list of the participants from an orgql query. So this is just looking for headings uh, that have a property of email. And then we get the emails that are associated with the current heading. And then I just use Ivy to choose a participant and assign it to that heading and mark it as a, as a to-do. And then similarly, we have, uh, we can just jump to a contact if, if I want to take notes um, or something like that. All right, now I wanna tell you about the links. So again, the, the motivation of having a special link to a project is that you can move the project around and it can be in very different places on different machines so that there's no way to use a path to get to it. So what we do instead is we have a link that takes a project name, a relative file path to the root of the project, and then a link target. And you can see this link is red because there is no project with a name project name. And so um, it's telling me it's not a, not a valid notebook link. So the project name is, this is what is registered in projectile. And then the relative file path uh, is, is relative to the project root, wherever that is. And then there's a bunch of ways we can define a link target, kind of like uh, in org mode. It can be a number, a char position, or a regular expression defined in the file. And for org files, it can also be any kind of org link modifier, like uh, to a heading or something like that. So once we get the, the path here, let's look at what this is. This is an org link of type NB, and then we get the path uh, right here. And we're going to parse this path into those three pieces. So I just split that string by the double colons. Um, that seems like a pretty reasonable um, delimiter. I, I never use double colons for anything else. And then we return the three parts. And there may be, um, the third part might be empty, uh, in which case we default to line number one. So that's the first part in what we can do with the links. This is just a couple of examples. So this uh, gets parsed into these three things. This gets parsed into these three things. <clears throat> All right, to follow a path, first we have to um, parse it. This is a um, CLD structuring bind. Is, it's an old way of unpacking those three elements into these three variables. Probably now I would use um, sequence let or maybe PK let to do that. And then we have a project. So first we get a list of all the projects. Then we um, try to match the, the project spec by looking through and filtering out anything that doesn't match the project. And once we have projects that match, then we can get to the file name that, we, that we're looking for. And so Depending on what we get, if we get no candidates, that means there's no project known. Um, if we get, uh, so if there's no project candidates, then it's not a known project. If we don't find any file candidates, then we couldn't find any file that, or any project with that uh, file name in it. And if we have one project and the file exists, then we just jump to it. And if we have multiple matches, like it's possible to have more than one project with the same name. Then we do um, a little bit more work in trying to figure out which one um, you wanted. All right, and then uh, there's a couple different conditions for that third component. If we have a number, then we go to a line number. If it's a pattern like C23, it means go to uh, the position char 23. And otherwise, we treat it as if it is a regular expression uh, that, that can be searched for. And then we can also follow links to other in other windows or down here in another frame. So that's just to uh, be uh, convenient. 
And then there's one more option to follow it with this system. That means use, use the system program to open it. So if it's an Excel file or an IPython notebook, it will open in Jupyter Notebook or Excel uh, for that. Let's see, I think I'll skip these. Maybe we'll look at the, the link face. This is uh, using fontification to make it red if it's a broken or unknown file. Um, dark violet would be when there's exactly one match and one uh, thing to do. And if there's multiple projects, then we make the link colored orange. And then here I put a tooltip on top of the, the link so that I can tell what, it, what it's pointing to. And then we activate the link um, here. Let's see, it says that I put an image on there, but is that true? Oh, well, it looks like it. So it looks like um, if the thing is pointing to an image, then I put an image on top of it. And otherwise, uh, we don't do anything. And then we define uh, some key maps. So sometimes I want to open a link in Finder or Explorer or Bash. And so we can uh, run NB link Bash to open the link at that point in Bash or in the Finder. And this way, this one just lets us find um, a file or another one using projectile. So in that same project. All right, and then I don't remember all these things. So here I have, um, eventually I will make a, a hydra for that. And then this is a key map on those links that we can use to um, open things. So uh, let's see, meta H is the hydra and Meta B is bash, meta E is explorer. Let's define a link. At the end, it's really simple. There's just a function for each one of these uh, parameters. And now let's look at, at a couple of these. All right, so these red ones uh, obviously don't exist. This one, you can see that I have many, uh, many readmes in different students. And this one, not sure what PRJ is. Maybe that's not supposed to be there. Um, let's just put a link here. So here, even this one, uh, I have multiple projects that match Cymax Notebook. So I have one in Cymax Channel, one in Cymax Git, and one in Cymax. Um, so let's see, if I do uh, meta E, this should open a finder in the location where um, it is. And if I have, uh, let's see, meta B, then this is going to open a bash shell in the current directory that the notebook is, is defined in. Okay, and then um, at the end, uh, actually let's go see if I do meta H then we get to the, uh, the Cymax notebook, um, that Hydra that I've been showing you kind of all along. So here I can uh, press, uh, let's see, control return, and it will open in another window, or I could type uh, meta return. shift return should open in another another one and those are all different things we could do okay so these are the things that um, are written in Cymax notebook they are mostly ways for me to organize search find things that I want to do um, and you know with with many things there there are works in progress that uh, occasionally I find corners I don't get to very often and um, but they're tools that I use you know most of the time on a on a daily basis I use some fraction of these um, all the time all right so that is it for today um, 
Cymax Notebook is mostly a tool I use for organizing all of the projects and keeping track of all of the things that I have to work on. So if I wanted to, let's say we want to get back to the channel and I want to get to the readme, then we have it here. And what would work in here is a n, let's say search by title. Here we have a bunch of art, uh, a bunch of these have no title. Some of them have titles. Um, let's go back to this one. And we can look at what else is in here. Um, if I press find file, then I can just choose any file that's uh, in, in the current uh, project. Like that. And ANR will make a channel.zip. And that will just zip up all of the files in here. And over here, you can see what gets made is a zip file, and it just contains a copy of all of the files in here. So lots of, of convenient things that I use when I'm writing proposals, when I'm writing uh, letters of recommendation, when I work on committees, etc. I can just jump around to different projects uh, pretty easily and uh, search for things within projects and otherwise keep things uh, as, as organized as, as I can. All right, so that is it for Cymax Notebook. I think in the next couple of days, I'll probably try to hit on OrgDB, which is the database tool that I use for enabling search across all of the projects and across all of the org files with different contexts. And then next week I will be releasing orgref3 and we'll have a series of, of videos about how we use orgref as part of our scientific writing um, process. All right, so with that, thanks for listening and I will see you next